Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chanzo. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday, the 29th of April. India's coronavirus infections cross 18 million record number of daily deaths. It's time to bring US troops home from Afghanistan, says President Biden in joint session of Congress. And security beefed up in Kathmandu Valley as 15-day lockdown to contain COVID-19 spread kicks in. And now for all the details. India's total COVID-19 cases passed 18 million on Thursday after another world record daily infection and death Delhi. The second wave of infections has overwhelmed hospitals and crematoriums. India's Foreign Secretary Harshwadhan Shringla said on Thursday that the country has prioritized imports of oxygen and around 40 countries had pledged their support. India's total COVID-19 cases passed 18 million on Thursday as it reported 379,257 new COVID-19 cases and 3,645 new deaths in the past 24 hours, the deadliest day so far for any country hit by the pandemic. The numbers have been climbing because of shortages of supplies like medical-grade oxygen and hospital beds in capital New Delhi and several Indian states. The second wave of infections has overwhelmed hospitals and crematoriums and prompted an increasingly urgent response from allies overseas sending equipment. India has prioritized imports of oxygen, Foreign Secretary Harshwadhan Shringla told a news conference on Thursday, adding that 40 countries had pledged their support. He said close to 550 oxygen-generating plants are expected to come in from different sources from all over the world. As I said, over 40 countries, and these are not just developed countries, our neighbours, uh, you know, Mauritius, uh, Bangladesh, Bhutan, uh, have all uh, come forward to offer uh, assistance uh, in, 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 their, uh, in, in whichever capacity is possible. Countries around the world have been rushing to help India alleviate the crisis. A second shipment containing 120 oxygen concentrators arrived in New Delhi from Britain on Thursday, with the first consisting of ventilators and oxygen concentrators having landed on Tuesday. India also received 20 tons of aid from its traditional ally Russia through two urgent flights in the early hours of Thursday. The country will receive a first batch of Russia's Sputnik V vaccine against COVID-19 on Saturday. People in India's eastern state of West Bengal voted in the last phase of assembly elections on Thursday, even as the COVID-19 cases surged to record high across the country. Counting of votes will be done on May 2. India's West Bengal state underwent polling for the last phase of assembly elections on Thursday, amid raging coronavirus pandemic in the country. The virus has had a huge impact on the elections, where one of the candidates is still battling the infection, while another succumbed to it. Counting of votes will be done on 2nd of May. Marks fund I have done, and I have done the sanitizer, and I will keep the sanitizer in the sanitizer. I will keep the sanitizer in the sanitizer. It was actually nice, the, the COVID precautions were exactly accurate, and the uh, social distancing was on pack. It was a great experience. West Bengal state has emerged as a key battleground for Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi's Bharatiya Janata Party or BJP, which is looking to extend its national domination. BJP's senior leaders, including PM Modi and Interior Minister Amit Shah, have also been relentlessly campaigning for the poll, flanked by local leaders poached from the Trinamool Congress, which has ruled West Bengal since 2011. Moving on, 
U.S. President Joe Biden, in his first joint address to the U.S. Congress on Wednesday, said that the withdrawal of troops from Afghanistan will not endanger national security, but will demonstrate American leadership by halting the cycle of endless armed conflict. Biden announced earlier this month that all U.S. forces would quit Afghanistan by September 11. U.S. President Joe Biden said on Wednesday that the withdrawal of troops from Afghanistan will not endanger national security, but will demonstrate American leadership by halting the cycle of endless armed conflict. Biden announced this month that all U.S. forces would quit Afghanistan by September 11. In his first joint address to the U.S. Congress on Wednesday, he said that the war in Afghanistan was never meant to be multi-generational. American leadership means ending the forever war in Afghanistan. I am the first president in 40 years who knows what it means to have a son serving in the war zone, he said. We degraded the terrorist threat of al-Qaeda in Afghanistan. And after 20 years of value, valor and sacrifice, it's time to bring those troops home. The announcement of the U.S. and NATO forces' withdrawal from Afghanistan has been accompanied with huge concerns over the return of a potential civil war in the country, as well as the regrowth of al-Qaeda and other terrorist groups. Meanwhile, Afghan local media reports said that Taliban has sent letters to a number of Afghan political leaders, calling on them to enter into direct talks with the group. A spokesman to top Afghan peace official Abdullah Abdullah said the move aims to create discord among the government officials, but the republic side is unified. The United States Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin spoke with Pakistan Army Chief General Kamir Javed Bajwa on Wednesday in a phone call to discuss the drawdown of U.S. activity in neighboring Afghanistan, a Pentagon statement informed. This comes as the U.S. President Joe Biden last month announced the decision to withdraw troops from war to Afghanistan starting on May 1 deadline. And many experts are raising concerns over the return of a potential civil war in Afghanistan. The U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin spoke with Pakistan Army Chief General Kamal Javed Bazwa on Wednesday in a phone call to discuss the drawdown of U.S. activity in neighboring Afghanistan. A Pentagon press release said during the call, Secretary Austin reaffirmed the importance of the U.S.-Pakistan bilateral relationship and expressed appreciation for Pakistan's support for Afghanistan peace negotiations. Meanwhile, the U.S. officials have asked the non-essential embassy staff to leave Afghan capital Kabul, citing yeah, increased threats. Earlier this month, U.S. President Joe Biden announced the decision to withdraw troops from war-torn Afghanistan starting on May 1 deadline, with the aim of completely withdrawing from the country by September 11. The announcement of the U.S. and NATO forces' withdrawal from the country has been accompanied with huge concerns over the return of a potential civil war in Afghanistan, as well as the regrowth of Al-Qaeda and other terrorist groups. In news from Bangladesh. Amid a fresh wave of infections that has forced the country into an extended lockdown, the only graveyard dedicated to COVID-19 victims in Bangladesh's capital of Dhaka is seeing a substantial increase in burials. The Bangladesh capital's one graveyard dedicated to COVID-19 victims is seeing a major increase in burials amid a fresh new wave of infections that has forced the country into an extended lockdown. Rayur Bazaar graveyard, which sits on the outskirts of North Dhaka, has been the sole keeper of COVID-19 victims' bodies since April 2020. The Dhaka Tribune, a local daily, reported that in 2021, the graveyard buried 27 coronavirus victims in January, 9 in February and 55 in March. But in April, burial spiked to over 100 in just the first two weeks of the month. Rayer Bazaar is digging more plots daily as a result of the current uptick. 
only a portion of the 80 acre that is 32 hectare plot graveyard is devoted to covid-19 victims hotat kore heart attack e corona e mara gechen to ajke onar oi sherir thik ag muhurto ni mara dan aj sokale amra atte sojon eshe onar dakhon shompurno korlam ebong doa durut kore amra ekhan theke bidai ni Bangladesh has so far registered 754,614 coronavirus cases and 11,305 deaths. Moving on to news from Nepal. A 15-day prohibitory order has been enforced in the Kathmandu Valley effective from Thursday morning in a bid to break the chain of infection as daily reported cases of COVID-19 have sharply escalated across Nepal in recent days. Security personnel have been deployed across several road sections to ensure that the regulations are strictly in place. Kathmandu Valley has emerged as a major hotspot as it has been reporting more than half of the total new cases recorded daily across the country. Kathmandu, Bhaktapur and Lalitpur too went into lockdown from Thursday as per the recommendation of the chief district officers. Nepal has so far reported 312,699 cases and 3,211 COVID-19 related fatalities. The active cases count stands at 30,209. On Wednesday, a day before 15-day lockdown kicked in, residents of Kathmandu Valley packed bus stations to return to their hometowns. Authorities in Nepal are grappling to contain the rapid rise of COVID-19 cases, with experts fearing that thousands of people in the Himalayan state have caught more infectious mutant strains emerging out of India. They were oil eco condition matter. Uh other strictly unuparsa or government le key gorsa one nabani, or gorn the Nepal government le kibani gorda in a Government के तरीका वाला है ना यो पोस्टपोर्ट नहीं चला दे सो वांसन है ना हो जाते देखें जा है ना ये कारण ले और एक नागरिक ले से आपने सो भी देख ले A centenarian couple in India's Maharashtra state, one of the worst hit by the pandemic, defeated COVID-19 and recovered after a successful treatment, giving a ray of hope to many as the death toll from the infection surpassed over 20,000 across the country. 105-year-old Dhenu Umaji Chavan and his 95-year-old wife Motabai defeated COVID-19 and recovered after successful treatment in India's Maharashtra state, one of the worst hit by the pandemic, giving a ray of hope to many. They had contracted the virus in March and were admitted to a government hospital in the state's Latur district. After 10 days of successful treatment, they were discharged on April 4. मी लोकांना एवढं संदेश देऊ शकतो कारण माझे आई वडील 100 वर्ष पार केलेले त्यांनी ह्या कोरोना मधून जर बाहेर येऊ शकतात तर मला लोकांना एकच संदेश द्यायचा आहे की कुणीही ह्या कोरोनाला न घाबरता स्वतः आपल्या आत्मविश्वासाने तत्पर दवाखान्यात जावं आणि वेळोवेळी सगळ्या गोष्टी कराव्या According to Suresh and his other family members, the victory of the couple over the deadly disease was a matter of celebration. As medical experts say, the elders are more prone to succumbing to the virus due to their weak immune system. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Before we conclude the top stories once again. India's coronavirus infections cross 18 million record number of daily deaths. It's time to bring U.S. troops home from Afghanistan, says President Biden in joint session of Congress. And security beefed up in Kathmandu Valley as 15-day lockdown to contain COVID-19 spread kicks in. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash Newsline and follow us on Twitter at is Asia News Live. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.